Our next little topic is acids. Acids can be a lot of fun, but they can be pretty darn dangerous. Now, when we look at acids, in order to recognize what type of acid we're working with, we really have to consider two ideas. We have to consider the fact that acids can be what we call binary acids, or acids can be oxy acids. There are two different types. Both are considered to be acids because they contain hydrogen. In the form of H plus. So binary acids. When we look at binary acids, binary really means we're working with two different elements. So that word binary relates to two elements. Okay. So I think you've heard me use the term binary ionic compound. Well, binary acid is two elements. In this case, though, the first element always has to be hydrogen. There's always got to be hydrogen present. The second element will then be some other non-metal. That's what has to be present. So an example, one that we work with a lot in chemistry is this acid, HCl. HCl is called hydrochloric acid. To get the formula for something like this, we can use the same idea of charges. We can use the idea that the hydrogen has a plus one, the chlorine has a negative one. So because we're dealing with both of them being ones, when we crisscross them down and follow our rules, we'll get HCl. But the naming becomes a little bit different. We don't call it hydrogen chloride. Hydrogen chloride is a gas. When you dissolve hydrogen chloride in water, that's when you actually create the acid. So when we write a formula for acid, not only will we put HCl, but we should also put in brackets AQ beside it. By putting AQ beside it, it tells us that that HCl is dissolved in water, and that's what creates the acid scenario. Now to name these acids, when we see this, these binary acids always have the name hydroic acid. They will always have that name. The part that you fill in, is the non-metal, the non-metal part. So that's where we got from the CL. That's where that part of the name comes from. Let's try another example, maybe. So if we take a look at another example, then, let's say we have hydrogen creates an acid with, so it reacts with sulfur. So I'm going to have hydrogen, it's one plus charge, sulfur, two negative. Do my crisscross rule, so the one comes down, the two comes down, I get H2S. Now, if I left it like this, I'm not talking about an acid. I would be talking about hydrogen sulfide, or some people might use the Greek prefix method to name it and call it dihydrogen sulfide. But when I put AQ beside it, now we're talking about the acid. So H2S with the AQ beside, we're talking about the acid. This is called hydro sulfuric acid. Binary acids are always named this way. They are always named hydro something ic acid. Always. Those are two examples of binary acids. Always remember to include that AQ with the acid. So those are our binary acids. The second type of acid we have are what we call oxy acids. Oxy acids must contain hydrogen. In order to be considered the acid, there has to be hydrogen. But the other part that makes this one really important is that we're also involved polyatomic. But the polyatomic ion has to contain oxygen, hence oxy acid.
So our oxy part from the name comes from the oxygen in the polyatomic. And the fact that it's an acid tells us that there has to be hydrogen present. Okay? This is what we're dealing with when we look at an oxy acid. So I'll write down an example of an oxy acid. An example of an oxy acid would be if we take one of our polyatomic ions. So let's say we were working with nitrate. We look at nitrate's formula. Nitrate has the formula NO3 with a negative charge. It's a polyatomic ion with a one negative charge. Now, this can react with hydrogen, hydrogen being the positive ion. When I take my one positive and react with my one negative, I create HNO3. Again, because it's an acid, it is good practice to put the AQ beside it. So I've got my HNO3 AQ. There's my formula for my acid. But to name this oxy acid, the naming system becomes a little bit different. And here's the little trick. So things that end in 8, for instance, nitrate, when we look at how these are named, they will become, the 8s will become ic acids. Okay? So that's how the naming system will work. The 8 changes to ic acid. So for our example with HNO3, this would be called nitric acid. So notice the 8 became ic acid when it becomes the acid name. So nitric acid is the name of that particular compound. All right, let's try a second example, chloric acid. When I see the acid, the ic, an acid in the name, that clues me into something. There's no hydro in front, so it's not a binary acid. It has to be an oxy acid. And knowing that it's an acid means there has to be H+. So now it just comes down to what polyatomic is used. Well, that comes from chlor. Chlor. Probably my chlor-8. Because remember, 8s are the ones that become ic acids. So my chlorate has the formula ClO3 negative. When I do my crisscross rule, my one positive and my one negative piece come together to form HClO3. Again, I'm going to be really fancy and put my AQ beside because it's an acid. And there's the formula for chloric acid. Now, we did see some polyatomic ions, though, that have ite in the name, like sulfite. Sulfite, we saw that name for a polyatomic ion. SO3, 2 minus, would be the formula for sulfite. Now, when sulfite creates an acid, it's going to react with the hydrogen, forming H2SO3. But the naming for this one is different. Okay? It's not a sulfate. If it was sulfate, this would be sulfuric acid. But it's not sulfate. It's sulfite. So we have to look at this idea, that the ites will become us acids. So when I go to name this, I'm going to call it sulfurus. acid. So the sulfate became, the sulfate would become sulfuric acid. The sulfite, which is what we're using in this case, because this is sulfite, would become sulfurous acid. So we see that us acid in there because we're using the ite form, which is, if you haven't noticed, the only difference between the ate and the ite form is one less oxygen on the ite. So let's try one more example. Let's try this one. If I gave you the formula nitrous, give you the name nitrous acid, what would the formula be? Well, if I think back to my Acid naming, I don't see any hydro in front, so it's not a binary acid. So it must be an acid that comes from a polyatomic. And I notice this part. The ending is us acid. 
which tells me it has to come from the it version. It comes from the it version of nitrate. So when I look at that, I know nitrous coming from nitrate would be NO2 with a negative charge. I know it's an acid, so I have to have my hydrogen. It's positive. And when I put the two pieces together and do my crisscross rule, I will get HNO2. And because it's an acid, I will put AQ beside it. So this is the form for nitrous acid, HNO2 with the AQ beside it. Things to remember, binary acids, we're dealing with two elements, one of which is hydrogen. They will always have the name hydro something ic acid. Example, HCl, AQ, we call that hydro or Acid. Now, if we take a look at our oxy acid, then we're dealing with hydrogen and a polyatomic. That has O in it. Our oxy acid. If we're dealing with the polyatomic ion, if the polyatomic ion has the name 8, if it has 8 at the end, the oxy acid name becomes ic acid. If the polyatomic name ends in ite, if that's the ending of the polyatomic, when it becomes an acid and reacts with the hydrogen, that polyatomic will be called us acid. So that's our little reminder. Our example for our eight would be nitric acid, which has the formula HNO3. Our example for the ite would be nitrite. Nitrite will become nitrous. Nitrous acid, which is HNO2. So that's just a little quick refresh if you want to recap all in one little slide. We've got our binary acids and our oxy acids. Make sure you don't get them confused because they do behave a little bit differently.